Hello friends, Coach Bob with you, and today we are going to be talking about something that may in the beginning seem somewhat controversial, but bear with me on it because I think it's going to be okay. So what we're going to be talking about tonight is COVID-19. No, not the sense of what the virus is or any of the debating points of COVID-19. Look, I don't think there's a family out there who hasn't been impacted by this stuff one way or the other. As a coach, we've certainly seen the impacts uh, within my own family. I've seen it and with young people and with their parents. So uh, don't think that I am kind of downplaying this and going, ah, everything's, you know, peaches and cream because I'm not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the unintended consequence that COVID-19 had on the motorcycle industry. And it is quite compelling information and very, very interesting. So let's talk about that right after this. All right, well, before we get going, if you would do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, all that stuff. Give this video a big old thumbs up and share it with your friends. I sure would appreciate it. So let's talk about, let's do a little history lesson before we get going. And I've got my notes right here. If you see me glancing down, um, it's because I can't remember things like I used to. But anyway, here we go. In 2020, um, if you'll remember, I did a video on how... Harley Davidson stock and the Harley Davidson, generally speaking, was going through the floorboard. Their stocks, their sales, everything was going south. In fact, I'm going to go further than that. We were seeing triple digit fallings in the stock market of virtually every motorcycle company out there. One of the few motorcycle companies that, that did seem to be flourishing somewhat was Can Am. Uh, another one was Polaris. Another one was Triumph, amazingly so, a European country company that we saw really starting to grow. Well, recently, and I'll drop a link to the article down below. It's it's an interesting read. It was in Forbes magazine uh, where they interviewed a guy named Robert Pandya, P-A-N-D-Y-A, not Panda, but Pandya. And he's an industry insider. He has a, uh, a podcast, I believe it's called like Center Stand. Um, He's a big influencer. He's been affiliated with, he's a big advocate and and influencer. He's been affiliated with uh, Indian, Victory, Piaggio. Um, And anyway, so Forbes talked to him about this particular subject. And as I was reading it, I was thinking, man, this is really, really interesting stuff. So the question is, before COVID, what was going on to make this motorcycle industry fall? What was going on? Because quite honestly, the motorcycle industry was in a free fall and it really, really was. It was honestly, we've got all of us geezers. Now I'll be 60 here very, very soon. I know a lot of you are that age or even older. And as we kind of get out of this, this whole place in our life, what is happening is that the young people aren't backfilling. And that's 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 a new trend. And so the motorcycle industry was really faltering quite heavily. Now, and the question is, why would that happen? Well, I think that there are a litany of reasons, and we're going to talk about a few of them. One is millennials did not like the risk associated with motorcycle driving. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just the way it is. Another one is that skills. When I was a boy, Every young man, every young girl grew up riding bicycles. We rode bicycles a lot. That was our wings. We didn't have a telephone. We didn't have the internet. Our freedom was a bicycle. That's what gave us our our freedom. And so we got on that bike and we rode everywhere. And for those of us who were more fortunate, as we got 14, that 13 to 15 year old age group, our parents bought us mini bikes or small motorcycles that we were allowed to ride in fields and that sort of thing. And we got quite acclimated to riding. Young people nowadays, that's not their life experience. And so to ask them to jump on a motorcycle, and which, which is something that they're already being told by the media is a rolling death trap, well, they're not going to want to do it. It's a, it's a tough sale. Also, 
cell phone addiction, computer games. Computer games can feed that adventure mojo, whether it's motorcycle racing, computer games, or any other kind of Call of Duty, all of those things. And those things are fun to play. I don't know if, if any of you other old geezers other than me have played them. I played them. I'm terrible at them, but I do enjoy them. But as millennials grew comfortable in their life and they had decided that they weren't interested in motorcycles, it wasn't even a blip on their computer game radar screen. Something happened. Something that was going to change the world forever. And that something was COVID-19. All of a sudden, they were told, you can't go out. You can't hang out with your friends. You can't do this. You can't do that. You have to social distance. You have to do that. You have to wear a mask. You have to do this. And all of these things. And they started to understand, wait a minute. What can I do to keep from going crazy? And all of a sudden, we saw motorcycle sales, two-wheel and three-wheel, and we saw the electric bicycle and the bicycle industry just go off the chart. Triple digit growth. And it was, it was night and day. All of a sudden, you were walking into a bicycle shop and a motorcycle shop that you had walked into for decades before. And there was nothing in the showroom. It looked like a Harley dealer in 1998. Remember when you had to order the Harley and wait on it? Well, that's how bicycle shops and motorcycle shops look. You have motorcycle shops with signs in the window now saying they'll buy your motorcycle. In fact, I had a, a subscriber that I've been communicating with through Facebook Messenger who was trying to sell a spider. No one could come up with the money. And he sold it back to the dealer. And the dealer gave him a good, they, they, he didn't lose anything on it. So the dealers are buying things back and they are giving you money for it. So if you do get in a pickle with your motorcycle, that's a good place to start. So was it just excitement or fear or, or what, what drove them into this place? Well, I think one thing is that it was affordable. It was an affordable adventure. Motorcycles are reasonably priced out the door, but we'll talk a little bit further about that one here as well. But they are affordable. And, you know, for those who were going to be told they're going to have to go back to work and all of a sudden, especially in larger cities where people are taking buses and subways and that sort of thing, young people could all of a sudden affordably go out and buy a motorcycle that they could ride and they were socially distanced. It was affordable. The insurance rates were good. You could, you could get in the HOV lanes and you could get there quick. And in California, you can lane split quick. So there were a lot of reasons that people started dashing over here. Not just fun, but for that reason also. There are a lot of people in larger cities that don't have a car. They take mass transportation. And therefore, they were buying the electric bicycle and the bicycle and the smaller motorcycles. And they were all of a sudden getting these things and the supply could not meet the demand. And we have seen, I know I have personally seen, because I'm always on that lookout for a motorcycle, the next best thing. Um, as I go online and look, I've watched the motorcycle prices go, and brother, they have gone up fast. But here's a question. What does it mean for those of us who have been a part of this industry for decades and we plan on staying here? What is it going to do to us? We know, as I mentioned, the prices have been driven up and we're seeing rapid inflation anyway. What does that mean for us? Or all of these purchases that these young people are making, are they going to be flashing the pan purchases? Or are they just going to say, you know what, I thought it was going to be fun, but it's not? Uh, or is this going to make the industry grow long term? I think it's going to be somewhere in the middle personally. And I know I'm jumping ahead. But I do believe there's going to be a large group of people who they got it and they didn't realize what they were getting into. And then there's the others who didn't realize what they were getting into in the sense that they didn't know it could be that much fun, that adventurous and that fulfilling. The others said, I didn't know it could be that cold, that wet, that expensive to maintain. So there are both sides of that coin. And I believe we're going to 
we're going to see that parting of ways and we are going to see a lot of used motorcycles on the market here in the not so distant future, which I believe will probably drive prices back down on the motorcycles. But one of the questions that I had is, will this pandemic change the way a large city looks? Will we all of a sudden, will we look more like those Asian countries where you have scooters and small motorcycles everywhere with people riding on them? You know, I don't think that's going to happen. But man, that sure would be cool if it did. You know, we, we hear a lot of people talk about the environment and protecting the environment and all of that stuff. But in all honesty, we're driving around in our big SUVs. And, and you know, I've, I've got an SUV. I'm not willing to give it up. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not willing to give up my 1,000cc bike or my Spider. I'm not willing to give up my SV650. But I'm willing to buy another small motorcycle and possibly use it when I go to the grocery store, which in turn will lower my carbon footprint because I'm not taking that SUV every time. So this obviously could make a difference. And are these young people that do start to commute, are they gonna all of a sudden go, man, I don't have my Sirius XM radio through my 10 speaker Bose system. I don't have heated seats and I don't have cooled seats and I don't have air conditioning. And when it's raining outside, I get wet. And when it's cold outside, I'm freezing. And when it's hot outside, I feel like I'm gonna faint. Are they all of a sudden gonna go, man, this isn't worth it. And the city is gonna go right back to where it was and motorcycles are gonna go right back to where they were, where we start watching things fall again. Now, as a as the prognosticator of prognosticators, like what they what that isn't that what they called him, Poxitani Phil, uh, in the um, <laughs> in the movie Groundhog Day, I will say this: I, I I don't know what the future holds, but I will say that the industry has stepped up to try to make all of this work. We've seen over the last few years trying to draw millennials in with automatic transmission motorcycles, uh, semi-automatics in the case of the Spiders, automatic in the case of the Rikers. Honda has a lot of automatic motorcycles, and that is a really, really cool thing. Again, like I said, that you know the convenience of being able to use these express lanes and get to work quicker and, and be protected against this virus as you're out riding does make riding a lot more fun. I do think that there's gonna be a large number who may stick around due to the fear. They have a greater fear of this virus than they do of getting run over by a bus. And then there's gonna be those who are gonna go, man, the weather, the safety, the fear, the traffic. And the big one that I believe is gonna be probably the greatest factor that is going to be put in this equation of wanting people to get rid of things is the high maintenance cost of motorcycles. Any of us who have been in the motorcycle industry, we understand it is not a car and they are expensive to maintain. If it's a chain drive, you're supposed to adjust and clean that chain every couple of hundred miles. And if you don't do it, it's gonna tear things up. And when you tear things up, you're gonna be replacing them and those parts aren't cheap. And then if we start running into shortages of parts, they're beyond not cheap, you can't get them. And then all of a sudden, you got a piece of art sitting in the garage covered in spider webs that you can't get parts for. So there are a lot of things that are going on. So how has all of this benefited us? If the prices have gone up and the supply is down, how has this benefited us that are say longer in the tooth, that have been riding a long time? I would say that the technology is definitely better we're going to see a more rapid advancement of the technology within motorcycles because young people aren't like I am. They, it, they will not be satisfied with something that is not technologically advanced. They're wanting the bells and whistles and the gadgets and the cool things. They want the ABS. They want the ride-by-wire. They want rider modes of all kinds. They want these things. They're going to demand these things, and we're going to get the benefit of all of that, and that is really, really cool. Another thing that we have seen is the development of a smaller CC motorcycle that has the feeling of a larger motorcycle. And for those of us who like the smaller CC bikes, and I'm one of those guys, whether it was the old, like the SL175s, uh, the, C, the smaller CBs, um, the Honda Mini Trails, those things, is we saw those motorcycles of our chill of our childhood, we're seeing those smaller motorcycles come back. 
Again, that two to 400 cc. The Ninja, KTM has a Duke 200. Uh, Yamaha has the R3. A lot of these motorcycles that feel bigger than they really are, and they do pretty well. You're not gonna do 110 miles an hour on them, but if you were gonna get on the expressway, you could certainly do 70 on them, and that's pretty cool. So they're large enough to ride, they have enough power, and they're really, really inexpensive. And then when you start getting into the twin cylinder, the 500 to 650 range, like my SV650, those bikes have plenty of power, they're reasonably priced, and they run forever. So those bikes, I think, are gonna, that's gonna be something that I look forward to seeing. If that market, if people start dumping those bikes, those are some bikes that I'd like to kind of start picking up. And another category that we've seen grow a lot is the little 125s. Young people in droves are running the 125s, the Groms, the Monkeys, the uh, new, uh, what is it, the CT125, the, the Trail 125 that's made by Honda. I've seen guys doing the Transamerica Trail on those little Trail 125s, grown men. So these things are cool and we're starting to see this whole thing come back around for these smaller CC bikes that are fun to ride. Even if you just get one to ride to the store, get a gallon of milk or go get a cup of coffee, feel like you're young again. Those things, I think we're gonna benefit from those things that are a part of this market right now. Another thing that we're seeing grow as a result of COVID is electric bicycles and electric motorcycles. I truly believe the electric bicycle is the wave of city transportation. We already have in Tallahassee a little, a little exchange program where you pay with your card or whatever and you open an account and these have these battery powered scooters that people, they just swipe a card and they ride and then they drop it off and they swipe it again. It has a little GPS chip in it, keeps it from getting stolen, that sort of stuff. If you get out of a geocache area, I think it just locks it up. But the whole thing of the electric vehicle that is getting developed more rapidly. And I think that as we see that develop, we're gonna see, this is the tip of the iceberg, y'all. COVID pushed us into a place where we are thinking about being outside again, where we're thinking about having some adventure outside again. People are tired of being locked up. They're tired of being locked away and they wanna figure out a way to safely do it. And motorcycling is the safest way you could possibly do it as far as getting a virus is concerned. Again, it's not gonna keep you from getting run over by a school bus or a taxi. It's not. But you're not gonna get COVID-19 riding a motorcycle by yourself. That ain't gonna happen. So we have seen this unintended consequence of the growth of the motorcycle industry. And for us, there's an upside and there's a downside and everything in between. But we have seen rapid change over the last two years. And that change, again, I think is gonna, that ball is rolling and it's building speed. And we are just beginning to see, we're on the precipice of this entire new world of what motorcycles are going to be, what they're gonna look like and how they're going to ride. And this is an exciting time to be into motorcycles because things are really rapidly changing. All right, so what do you think is gonna happen? Leave your comments down below. Share with me what you think is gonna to happen to the motorcycle industry once this pandemic dips on down. Or do you think the pandemic's here to stay and that the motorcycle industry is, good, is just a small part of the solution? What do you think? Please share your comments down below. Remember, keep them civil, no profanity. Let's be nice to one another, because that's how we roll. Now, do me a favor, go out, by the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself, and remember, if you're not having fun, you are doing it wrong. Now you go seize the day, and I will see you on the road real soon.